everybody. Welcome to Steak and Eggs, episode 29. And we have some very big announcements, uh, which is, well, they're, they're good and they're bad because, well, we have a Clips channel. Ooh, yes. Oh, really? Channel. Wow. Uh, but it's bad because it has just about the dumbest name I've ever heard. Uh, because all the good names got taken because I guess people wanted to steal that shit. So it's a <laughs> steak and eggs pod clips. I don't think that's that bad. I think it's really bad. It's unique. Uh, yeah. It's very unique. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if it's good for SEO either, but that's just like dork YouTube talk, but it mm. might be fine. It's uh, probably fine. Does that mean we're still going to have shorts on this channel? I don't know. Probably not. Okay. All right, and also, oh, yes, we are still going to have shorts on this channel. Very cool. Uh, and also, the Patreon's doing great, so if you want to go check that out, feel free to click the link in the description. Uh, but yeah, super cool. Check it out. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm autistic. Why? Okay. <laughs> did, you, did you take a test on the internet that told you that? No, nah, so I have, uh, one of my roommates bought me slime. You ever play with slime? Oh my god, what does this have to do with being autistic? I don't know. My buddy said my I play with it and then my buddy says, Yeah, you're you're autistic. Oh, because you, got, you, play you have with autism. It? Over and over and over again. Wait, so he bought it for you just to tell you that if you liked it, you have autism? I guess so. It was like it was like your own <laughs> little fuck? autism test for yourself. <laughs> yeah, well the, <laughs> the yeah, problem pretty is, much. I like it a little bit too much. Have you ever played with slime? You ever no. play with it? Oh, okay. No. So it's like uh, it's glue mixed with uh, detergent. I think it's called borax. And it makes this really fun substance that you can squish. Okay. And uh, I need to give you some, Emmy. Because it, I never felt, I, I never knew what it felt like to be stemmed. But like, it's good shit. I, yeah. I am so fucked up about the slime shit. I waited uh, nine days for this website called Slime OG to restock uh, slime so I could get uh, this slime from SpongeBob, which... I sound really fucking stupid when I'm talking about this. No, no, keep going. This is <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah, uh, and there's a SpongeBob slime called Goo Lagoon. And uh, I went to go buy it. And within four minutes, half my order was, it was sold out. And so I didn't get the Goo Lagoon SpongeBob slime. And, so there's uh, that many people buying stuff like this. Yep. Oh my God. I have the whole store sold out in five minutes. So like, are there is there a community around this or what? I don't know. I mean, so I've been getting into a lot of like ASMR TikTok. Okay. Uh, because there's a lot of these old women that put things in their mouth and then like, not weirdly, yeah, like, and yeah. they chew it for like ASMR. I don't know. I oh, got, I've like, like the, the candy or whatever. Yeah, the candy. And they had like, these really big fat lips. And they chew it with like an inch between each of their teeth because I got AirPods. And so the ASMR goes crazy. I feel like I'm inside a grandmother's mouth. Uh, it feels incredible. Uh, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Just, there's a wow. huge ASMR slime. There, there it is. That's a Goo Lagoon. Do you see that? Is that not the most beautiful thing? And look at the old grandma hands. Look at that. And she squeezed. Those are grandma hands yeah. well, I mean, to you? Uh, yeah. Those are old I don't hands. know about that. Huh? Yeah, they're not wrinkly at all. That's like a 35-year-old woman, Max. Well, I don't I don't look at people's hands that much to be able to identify that, but So so you have you you buy the how much is this? That is Oh, it's only it's only 16.99. Okay, it's not, yeah. okay. So it's not like ridiculously overpriced. Yeah, yeah. But I've I've spent like three hundred fifty dollars on slime so far. Okay. Wait, and, what? Yeah, I spent I spent, spent three hundred fifty dollars on slime so far. I got oh a, wow. I got a I got a cherry coke one, which is delicious. Most okay. just like cherry coke. I have blue raspberry. Uh, I, I have a one that's called Milky Way is coming soon. I have another one called uh, Cow Galaxy, where it's a bunch of like beads inside. It. It's the funnest thing ever. So man. do you ever just like put them all together, or yeah. can you do and that? You mix them. You can mix them. Oh and then wow. It makes the slime feel different. Oh my god! And then they're fucked up, though, right? So you have to buy more. Yeah, and that's how they get you. So how long can you use it before it is fucked up? I don't know. I've been using them almost every day now, and the problem is one of them looks like shit. And so when I'm yeah. playing with them on stream, it looks like I'm playing with a big pile of shit. And what's it called? <laughs> it's called Coke slime. It's oh, okay. So it's not slime. like you know shit slime <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> it's just a big old pile of brown slime, and it looks fucking repulsive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's really fucking gross. Uh, but I love it. And so uh, I was wondering, would you guys like to play with my slime next episode? I didn't bring any, but next I will play with it, I'm, sure. I'll try it, sure. Oh, yeah, that's why so not? exciting. Okay, maybe you'll find out if you're autistic too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's super cool. <laughs> I'm sure I'll like it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now, a word from our sponsors. Get with the times. 
and download this app. How many times have I had to jump from the future just to remind you that Dash App is the number one finance app on the US App Store? You, you like get that this takes a, a toll on my body, right? Like I'm not invincible, it hurts. It really hurts. Plus I'm pretty sure my arch nemesis Jay has been catching up to me. And pretty soon he just might. Jay, you found me. So it's all over, huh? Just go ahead. Do what you need to do. You forgive me? Everything I've done? And all that you want is for people to know that Cash App has helped you get ahead on your money management? And you just want people to know that Cash App has face ID, card lock, and real-time transactional alerts. I won't forget this time this day. Thank you for everything. And I'm sorry. Full disclosure, I'm not really sure what any of this is, but you can download Cash App on the App Store or Google Play. Links in the description below. Thanks, Cash App, for sponsoring our podcast. I want to talk about something that I don't like. Um, Armored Core 6 is ruining my life. Why? I'm not having fun, Asman. Why not? Okay, because I was having so much fun in the beginning. Uh, the super hard boss that made everybody quit the game. I heard you two shot it. I killed it very fast. Yeah, I, I think I got it down in 40 minutes. Okay, good. Um, the, that was incredible. It's Balteus, by the way, guys, if you don't know, the guy yeah. with a lot of missiles. Yeah, Balteus. Yeah. You, you, you two shot it? I don't remember. Okay, because I, my, kill, I killed it really fast. Like it was like maybe two, three, not more than four. How does okay. the difficulty of this game compare to other games? Um, I would say Balteus is not that hard. Well, I mean, like the game overall. So like, it's like one of those. So it is harder than Dark Souls three or Dark Souls one, mm -hmm. but it is easier than Sekiro. Okay. Okay. Well, the reason why, okay, so so this is why Armored Core is like harder than the Dark Souls games. Because if you ever watched a Dark Souls speed kill boss attempt, you know, have you, you guys ever seen this? Like the cheese shit that people do? Where they're sitting there for fucking two minutes buffing themselves. They walk in, <laughs> cancel the cinematic, kill the boss in one hit. Well, you can't fucking do that. Oh, I've never Core. seen that ever. Oh, well, there's a lot of them. Okay. And so, yeah, there's a lot of them for every fucking boss. And the the thing is, like, in, in Dark Souls and, like, Elden Ring, like, you can buff yourself, you can put, like, all these little things on yourself to make yourself really, 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 really strong. But in Armored Core and Sekiro, you just have to be good at the game. Now, you don't have to be insane at the game, but you have to at least be good. And you can't over-level the game in the same way. And, yeah, that's uh, fair. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. That's 100% fair. Yeah, you can't over-level it. You can't stack seven buffs to kill the boss in one hit. There's just a lot of strategies that don't work. However... Armored Core is a lot easier than Sekiro. It is, I, I mean, so I was playing the game and I had probably one of the worst screams of my life. Because, Armored Core? Yeah. And <laughs> because, okay, so what happened was I was going through and I'm talking about like my ego was on cloud fucking nine. Oh, like no. I was going through every stage. I didn't lose to anything. I killed this really hard boss in like, you know, two or three attempts. It was whatever. I go up against that spider cocksucker and I spent seven hours until <laughs> until seven, seven like, hours. Yeah, I thought they were lying. Yes, because I well the reason why is oh. because I just got really mad and I refused to change anything. And oh, it just I've, doesn't I've work. Done that. Yeah, I've done and that. it just doesn't work. And so I changed the build finally because I went to sleep mad. I woke up mad, and then I spent the entire rest of the day mad. And then I finally got to the stream the next day. I'm like, okay, I just want to get this over with. Let's just move on. And so I changed the build and I kill it in like one try and I'm like okay guys wow what a great game thank god and so I, yeah I beat the game last night actually Wait, so you don't because my chat's been telling me this a lot because uh -huh. fun fact if you do something on stream yeah, my chat tells me all about I'm it I'm sorry about that <laughs> that's <laughs> okay um, I'm being told you don't like changing anything no why would I because that's the fun of the game well, it's about also like, so the reason why I don't like changing things is because 
you get into a play style. And if you constantly change your play style, you have to reset the learning curve. Yeah, I do so, the same thing. Yeah, exactly. I also don't want to let the backseaters win because yeah. if they're like, oh, you should like change this or like add this ability. You have to go to the menu then and then use this item. And then, then before the fight starts, use this buff. And then after you use that buff, as soon as the boss does this mechanic, you need to use this ability. And then, okay, so move to the left. There's a blind spot on the left. And if you do that, you'll be able to kill him if you're good enough, which you're not. Oh, yeah. I yeah, just don't want to admit they're right. I just want to be like, I can beat it my way. So I can, I'll sit there for three hours instead of 15 minutes and beat it my way. That is exactly what I did, except gonna, it was seven hours. I'm going to segue, but I'm going to come back to where we just were. Okay. So I had one of those experiences. Yeah. Where Chad was like, if you just do this, if you just do this, you'll win the game. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, fucker, you do it. Okay. So I bring on this guy who was backseating me. He was a CN vet. Right. Uh, one of the best players in Hawkeye Star Rail. Okay. Uh, to come try my MOC 10. Because everybody said I could clear it, and I'm just bad. Okay. And so I get one of the best players in the whole game to try it. He wasn't backseating me that much, but I was like, okay, guys, can Mr. Pokey try it? He's like one of the best players in the entire game. Yeah. And they said, yeah, he'll do it in one fucking try. He goes, he plays on my account, and he still can't do it. Yep. So it's, it's not me. And so that felt vindicating as fuck. Yeah, I bet Because it did. all these little shitheads, oh my God, I had to put them in their place. It felt incredible. Uh, but back to Armored Core 6, uh, I was shocked at that boss. Because I have this weapon that I know is really good versus it. Yeah. It's the drill. Have you tried the drill? I have not tried the drill. The pile driver? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it, oh my God. It does so much fucking damage. Yeah, it's insane. If you get a charge hit, it 100% staggers the boss. Given yeah. it's awful to hit. Like it is very hard to hit, but it is so cool. I've been swapping my build nonstop. I just found these two rocket launchers called the Songbirds, and I'm running two of those on my back because they're two dual-shot bazookas. And then I had napalm uh, in one arm, and then I also had a rocket launcher, a bazooka, and then I also now have a long-range shotgun, which is, it's got to be busted. There's the laser no one? No, a regular one. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I have my drill. I've kept my drill the whole game, the yep. moment I like, because it's so fucking cool, and I love Gurren Lagann. So I've been using it the whole damn time. Uh... I will admit the stage where I'm at right now, which makes me, I've never, I've never gotten, I haven't rage quit a game since, uh, Dark Souls 3. Abyss Warden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one, this one is worse than that. <laughs> this level is so bad. It is, I'm not even kidding you. I'm not even kidding you. It is one of the most unfun things I've ever done. It's not because it's hard. It's not. It's really not. It's just not fun. It's one of those levels. You know, for, for Spider Boss, seven hours, that must have sucked balls. But yeah. at least you had to do, okay, I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm sure it was awful. But at least when you died, you got to just get right back into it. For this level, it's not like that. You have to go all the way to the beginning every single fucking time. Clear a mini boss just to get an attempt at the boss again. And it's the level where there's like 50 hordes of enemies and then there are these two these two fucking guys talking in your ear the whole time. They summon these big ass fucking robots and with the, and I know it's because I'm not changing my build. If I were to change my build, it'd be very easy, but I, I don't want to. And I am, I kind of want to try the boss that you struggled on for eight hours using your build. Mm -hmm. That sounds like mm -hmm. an awful time. But yeah, I would, if you ever have the time to try this stage with my build, I want to rip the skin off my fucking face just thinking about this level. It's bad because my 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 rockets won't lock on. They won't lock on because everything is so small and they move very quickly. And my drill can't hit anything. And whenever I want to just get closer, because if I get closer, then they all fucking peg me. What? Yep. No, they don't. What do you no, mean, dude? They do. They peg you. I don't get. I I don't know. I mean, I just went in there and I I. It wasn't even a big deal. The only reason I didn't one shot is I literally ran out of ammo. But that also happened to me because my guns to kill the fucking ads. I run out of ammo when the boss gets there. Well, you got you got to use the pile driver. That's the thing is like you like I, I feel like if I had to if I have to do that one again in New Game Plus, yeah, I'm just gonna use a melee weapon uh, instead of one of the songbirds. Use, well, you couldn't because songbirds are on your back and melee is in your hand. There's a crazy menu item that has that allows you to put it on your back. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah, isn't that cool? That is so that is cool. So cool. <laughs> what the fuck? Have you been doing PvP? Yeah. Uh I did PvP last night. I did a tournament and uh I had my viewers fight against me and fight against each other. It was really fun. Who won? 
I won every single game except for one. Oh, was oh, it the final? Oh, wait, that's sick. Uh, yeah, I, I, I probably did like 20 or 30. And uh, that guy probably felt so fucking cool. Yeah, he, he felt like the king. Did you VIP him? I probably should have banned him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but besides that, yeah, I mean, I had one where like you, they're in the game, there's like a thing that saves you at the last second of death and it keeps you at one health. Yep. And I beat this dude two times. It was like my last, uh, the last uh, like guy I was playing against. I beat him and I had one health left after the death save had proc. Oh, and no. he, he died. Like I was like, literally seconds away from losing. So I was, uh, I mean, it was really fun. Like the PVP, cause like y'all have done PVP in From Software games, right? And it's oh, really, really not so good. But the truth is like the Armored Core PVP is, it feels like the net code for it is much better. It's much more responsive. It feels really, really good. Hmm. I need to try that. Yeah. Out of curiosity, looking back on it now, for, yeah. for your fight versus the spider boss. Yeah. Do you do you really do you re you really think it was the build? Yeah, because what so, was the build? It was tank, right? It was the tank one. So the reason why is because I had a lot of abilities and attacks that did a lot of damage, but they didn't do consistent damage. Yeah. So like I would stagger the boss, and then I would just look at it. <laughs> like that was the problem, right? It was just yeah. bad. Like, it was just a bad build. And like I was going into melee as a tank, and so I was taking a lot of, uh, of like basically unavoidable damage at the time. And so it's like, yeah, I, I think the build, because like I, I went from literally not e like barely getting past the first half of the fight to I actually died once with the new build because I forgot about the explosion in the second fight. But this after that, I killed it with two heals left. That's what it was okay. nothing. It was just a joke. So I am wondering, do you think there's any bullshit to this game? Like, if you lose, do you ever think there's a bullshit factor or do you think everything's fair? Is there a bullshit factor to the game? Because I want to say, I think this is the biggest bullshit from software game. Really? Okay, why? Uh, the lock-on system is sometimes worse than Dark Souls 2 for the melee. For the melee with the drill, it's really bad. I've never used the drill. I used the the like the the normal uh, yeah. one, the one you start with, I thought was incredible. Was so, great. yeah, the laser sword, really good. Why don't you just use that? Uh, because the drill's really cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty that makes sense. It. And I'm running the uh, the close range targeter with like max close range. So uh -huh. I know it's not my targeting chip. And I will go right at them and then I'll just miss. Right. And it is one of the most soul shattering feelings missing a melee that takes you, first of all, half a fucking hour to do when you rev it up. And uh, the amount of missed melees, I, I, uh, Oh my God, I'm getting angry just thinking about. Yeah. Uh, it's not a good feeling, Asma. And if you're, I would like you to try the drill sometime because it is very cool when you hit with it. It's very cool. Okay. No, no, I know it's fucking insane. Like, yeah. I'm fully aware of that. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I feel like Armored Core is probably more fair than like a lot of the other games because it's like, how is it? Because I, I don't know. Like, the way that whenever I think of something that's unfair, I think of something that puts you in a position that you either can't react to or there's something wrong. Like the only thing I don't like about Armored Core is like a lot of times whenever you're fighting against the boss, the boss will shoot missiles at you and the missiles will go off screen and then they'll come back down. So you have to have like a mental timer of it. It doesn't like really feel good to, yeah. to, to like avoid that. Like I, I'm not a fan of that specific mechanic and I wish that the field of view was bigger. Uh, like you could see more around your tank and maybe that would also make the missile issue better. But other than that, no, I, I think the game actually plays very well. So the, another reason why I think it's very bullshit is okay. because you have to use the auto lock-on mechanic. You don't get to just hit them because you hit it. You have to shoot when it says, yep, it's red targeting. And when it's red targeting and it doesn't hit, it's like, well, what did I do wrong? I don't like that. That's not true. What do you mean? What do you mean? Because like, so, so like, how many times do you miss the songbird? It's probably a lot, right? So much. I never do. There's no way. There's no way you can't. Okay, explain how. Well, uh, you have to understand the AI of the game. And yeah. once you understand the AI of the game, and you know the AI will always dodge and then move in this way because it's the same for pretty much every fucking encounter, all you have to do is boost right next to them, hit them at, at point blank, stun them, then move out, and then do it again. Yeah, because but, you think about it, it's a rocket, and the closer you are, the better chance you're going to have to hit. I just feel that 
And I believe there is manual shooting that you can unlock. Yes, that's true. Have you used it? No. Why? Why would I go? I'm, I'm not missing. <laughs> There's no fucking way you're not missing. You never miss. I don't think it. No, I I, I probably hit eighty percent, eighty to ninety percent. No, it's, my it's, it's same. I'm hitting yeah. a lot, but when I don't miss, I don't feel like it's because oh I didn't I did oh man I should have played better. And I'm just like oh okay the auto lock didn't work. I feel like there's never been a time that I've missed and it wasn't my fault. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like you need to make more excuses in life. I feel like okay. it'll I feel like it'll benefit you a whole bunch because oh my god there's no so you so you played PvP yes you played a whole bunch and you never just I never just missed no because I will. <sighs> I know how to make them hit. Like, it's simple. So when you were losing for eight hours on the spider bus, you never yes. said this is bullshit? I thought that generally, I thought that I didn't like how the spider boss had unavoidable, like that red damage that like felt unavoidable, especially in the tank. I didn't like that. Mm. But other than that, I was just saying this guy, guys, I don't think, I, maybe I'm too old. You know, like, I, I don't know what the fuck this is. Like, I can't handle this robot shit. Like, I think we just got to go back to, like, you know, uh, vampire survivors or something. Was it actually that bad? It was awful, bro. It was, like, oh. fucking, like, uh, existential crisis bad. It was awful. Okay, but so you think that was 100% player issue? It wasn't the game being bullshit at all? It was a build issue, right? I mean, I changed the build and instantly killed the boss. I think it's a build issue, but... My, my, my thing is, I feel like every from, soft, from, from, from every from Software's game, I feel like it's supposed to be bullshit. That's, really? That's my thing. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I think that my... So, like, what do I consider bullshit? I consider bullshit things that are, like, like tricks, you know? Like, it's not really a trick in Armored Core. It's just hard. It's like Kenichi, bro. Remember that? You know what it was? Okay. <laughs> Kenichi, that was bullshit. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the, you know the really hard guy, the Balteus? Yeah. So, I was fighting him. And what I consider bullshit, and you, yeah, I know what you're going to say. It's not bullshit. But in my fucking opinion, if I yeah. dodge a rocket once, I shouldn't have to dodge the same rocket twice. So, when he shoots the rockets at me, because I'm so fucking fast... I don't, I, I'm not allowed to only dodge them once. Because I dodge them in such a way, they loop back. Because they didn't hit me, they loop back and they hit me from behind. So that's not how the rockets work. That, that's what they did though. That is what they did. But that's not because he shot them at you. So the rockets are deployed and then yep. they choose a target. Yeah, the heat so, so whenever the rocket is deployed and you dodge the deployment of the rocket, you didn't really dodge the rocket. You just dodged the deployment of the rocket. And then the rocket is going to come back and hit you. you don't, so, like, you, you don't want to be that close, right? And if you are, you have to, like, you know, do the mental timer. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, here's my fucking opinion. Yeah. Okay? Because if the game wasn't bullshit, this is what it would have done. I mean, I am so sorry, but when you play Armored Core 6, you'll get all yeah, of I'm, I'm waiting. Play it? I'm waiting till it's been out for a while, and I've yeah. been trying to not watch too many streams. Okay. Because I, I kind of, like, I know that for a lot of people, this is, like, the worst thing ever. I kind of like that everyone in my chat already plays it and knows what's going to happen. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah so they're, like, like I, Pepe I, like, laughing I mean, and backseaters, I don't really mind unless they're, like, spoiling something that, like, is, like, really big to figure out. Yeah. But, like, I, I like that everyone, like, knows what's about to happen. Right, much, yeah. So. It's like a shared experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I'm waiting. Okay, that's I'm trying good. Trying not to watch too much. Uh, but I, this this talk doesn't bother me at all. It's interesting. Okay, I also think the story is beyond fucking boring. Did you like it? I think the first half of the story is very hard to follow and understand, and it's yeah. very disconnected because you're effectively a mercenary building up your reputation with different yep. corporations. When does it get good? So, uh, the second half. Okay, I just I just beat the worm. That was fucking sick. I think the worm is the turning point. Okay, dude. 80, Maybe a little bit before 80, that. 85, 90, 100 percent max I won't capacity. Miss. I won't yeah. miss. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, it was so fucking cool. Dude, man. I died and I was so happy. Cause I was like, I get to hear it again. So it was I so th this is like it's one of those bosses like uh on like Yorm the Giant or like one of them where there's like a gimmick to them. I hate gimmick bosses, but anyway. And so I was like, well, I'm so good at this game, I'm gonna do it without the gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I fucking did not. That was really, really hard. You know what's crazy? Yeah. I instantly started the fight, and I was like, it's a, gi the, just like, it's a gimmick fight. You need this weapon. And, I, and in my head, I was thinking, 
There's no fucking way Asmund listened to his chat. And I bet he well, did. Well, I did. I did listen to them. And then yeah. I said, okay, I need that. I'm not going to use it. Does <laughs> anyone that. like gimmick bosses though? Like, I do. Because I, I, I feel like if I wasn't streaming, I would have to look it up. Like I, I wouldn't have the patience to sit there for hours to figure it out. I mean, they literally say, all right, so okay, well, we have the mission. <laughs> and well, well, I mean, is it though? I mean, like with Yorm, it's kind of hard to understand. I'll give you that. But like with the Elden Ring boss, there's a boss that's like that. And there's literally an item that's shiny that's right next to you whenever you walk in. And it says basically, use this fucking item. And yep. there's no way you would kill him without that. It's not that, that bad. I, yeah. I think the worst Sekiro boss so far is the one that's like the hearing, seeing, like whatever monkey, the, the three or four monkeys. Yeah. That one didn't take me that long. But even though I like solved it, I was like, I don't understand what just fucking happened. One of them follows you. No, I know. Yeah. Well, you're talking about the resurrecting monkey? No. no. Uh, no. She did that. There's that, like, a, there's the like a, a puzzle boss. And my chat was like, oh, you're going to be here for hours. It's the one before the mortal I blade. just, I just walked, I just like wandered around the map mm -hmm. and like kind of found them. And then I was like, I don't understand what I just did, but I, I beat it. And I, I did get the one behind me. Yeah. The, the worst thing about that is whenever I did it on my stream, I remember everybody was talking shit and I was getting mad the whole time. <laughs> I killed it on the first try, but like it took like 10 minutes. Like I was just running around. Where the fuck is he? Where the fuck is this goddamn motherfucking monkey? Where's this piece of shit monkey? And I'm just like fucking mauling about this. Wait, did you this. know I killed the invisible one on accident? I did. I did. And too. I didn't. I didn't know. I did Wait, too. What? Everybody else in the chat was mad. There's, there's this puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> where it, well, it's spoiling so, it. Oh, guess what? Okay, so there's this. I don't do that. Okay, there's ahead. these four monkeys you have to kill on this map and like it's like a puzzle. You have to like figure out how to like sneak up on all of them basically. And there's an invisible one that's following you the whole time. I didn't know, but somehow I killed it on accident. Yeah. Yeah, like I turned oh, around. How do you kill it on accident? Well, because like you turn around. It's like the monkey goes somewhere and then you turn around and then like you see it and it's like, oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, okay. And then you get him. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's about it. No, no it, I think I killed it when I was killing another monkey and I did like a some shit and I saw like two and I was like, what the fuck? Okay. Okay, yeah. I guess I'll kill <laughs> like, both of them now. I thought, I thought it was just like some kind of effect. Like I didn't even know that there was one so, that I killed on accident. So did you kill the owl in like the fire area? Yeah, I just I just did oh, that one. The one that the butterfly was a real lady cock area. Sucker. Well, what was yeah. the hardest fight for you so far? Probably that one, right? I think I spent longer on um was that Genichiro who had like the lightning arrows? Yeah. I oh, think yeah. I spent longer on him, but uh, owl, owl is harder. But yeah. I yeah, I think it took me three hours to beat Owl the second time. I think that's pretty good. That's overall pretty good. But my chat was saying he's the considered like the third hardest boss, and the final boss used to be considered the hardest from soft boss before Melania. Or is the that not third true? hardest? Who the fuck would even be number two? I don't even, I'm trying to think about like, yeah, that no, no, he's not the third. He's, he's, I, I think that he's almost on par with the last boss. Like oh, okay. it, it, if he's a nine, the last boss is a 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think the last boss is pretty easy. I one shot it. Okay, Tech Town. <laughs> so did you ever beat Genichiro? You never did. Because uh, I no. watched the stream. Yeah, Honkai Star came out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I had to do that. Oh, wow. I could go beat it, though. For sure. If you want me to, I could. Easily. I could, no I problem. Could give, I, could, I could beat you it. You got to beat it, Armored Core first. I'll beat that probably tonight. I got to be close. How long is that game? You said you're almost done with it? I beat it in 17 hours. And oh, wow. that was okay. also seven hours put into so one boss. I'm I'm five hours in and I just beat the worm. So wherever that's at. I don't know where that's at. Yeah. Right. That means nothing to me. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's, he's gonna you're gonna finish the did you do all the arena fights? Uh I've done everything to E rank. I don't know how much time I've put into Sekiro. Let me Okay. I haven't been messing around with Arena too much because I'm just kinda I literally I'm not I'm not even kidding. I am I am skipping all story. I don't give a fuck. Uh, I am. I start the mission. I click in my left analog stick. I fucking fly to the objective. I beat the fuck out of the boss. I go to the next one. I don't know. 
I've listened to everything. Like, I feel like the story is okay towards the end. Okay. But like at the beginning, it's just hard to follow. And it's like, the truth is it has to be kind of hard to follow. I, I like, I don't really give a fuck. Whenever I finished Elden Ring, I wasn't like, wow, what a great story. I was Same. like, wow, I can't wait to watch the video on what the fuck really happened here. No, exactly. That's how I am for every game now. I'm, just like, yeah. I'm like, I'll wait for a Vati video to make a, a video. Mm -hmm. exactly. I, I don't, I've I don't care. spent 28 hours on Sekiro. 28 hours? Yeah, and I spent 35 and 38 on each Souls game. 35 and 38. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, 38 for Dark Souls 3 is pretty good. I would say. I think I did every boss too. I don't, I know that Sekiro has a fuck ton of mini bosses. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them, but. Did you I beat three, the headless boss? Which headless boss? Any of them. I did a couple, yeah. Okay, yeah. So then there you go. Yeah. I just want to talk about it one more time and then I'm going to just give up. Go ahead. I just don't like when I dodge a rocket and it comes back and it hits me on the back. <laughs> well, then we'll stay farther away. Well, I'm melee. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Okay. I mean, that's the, other, that's the other thing I really don't like about the game is, is that getting hit from shit that's not on my screen feels so frustrating. When you go into a room and you get attacked by mobs that aren't on your screen at length. Oh, and also the hit scan. Oh my God. Hit scanning units make me want to fucking. Oh, I was about to. I, what if I told you that there is no hit scan? The, the blue laser guy. There's a blue laser. You're falling down into a pit. I know what you're talking about. That's not hit scan? No, it's not. So the one where you're falling down to a giant pit and there's a giant And there's thing. the big thing and you have to fall all the way down yep. and then like it closes up and then it opens back up. Yep. Yes, I know what you're talking about. That's not hit scan. It's not hit scan. How do you know? Because I dodged it. How many times did it take you to dodge it? A lot because I only dodged it once and I got hit every single other time. But I know it's not hit scan. But it's pretty damn close. It's very close. <laughs> it's, it's very, very, very close. close. I hate his scan. I think it's the biggest bullshit. Because I, I, I wish the Dodge had an iframe. That would be so sick. That would be awful. You don't like that? That would be so awful. It doesn't even make sense. What? Neither does it. It doesn't make sense in Elden Ring either. But it has to make sense in Elden Ring. Because like, you're, you're not rolling. Gonna, yeah, exactly. But like, you're a tank. You're just moving to the left. You're a human. You're just rolling on the ground. <laughs> well, yeah, but if the guy swings his sword at you and you roll underneath the sword, it logically makes sense. Yes, but if, but if he swings at you and you're rolling and it goes through you and it still does no damage, that makes no sense. Yeah, but at least sometimes it makes sense. In Armored Core, it would <laughs> never make sense. No, because so, so, so the atoms of the missiles go through your atoms because it misses because you're dodging. For sure, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, I think it would be cool. But I, that's just I feel mind. like you're doing fine in the game. Like you're doing totally fine. I watched you fight the, uh, the. You, I, I'm sure like, I mean, I mean even, even you saw the, uh, the what was it? The trailer with like the big red guy yeah. with like the arms. Yeah. yeah. You were fighting him, the trash cleaner. Yeah. That you run in at the very beginning and you instantly get killed in one hit. Yeah. yeah. You saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Literally one hit. <laughs> that was that was funny. Yeah, it was. Not funny. It was Even I was funny. like, yeah, as we go see yeah. that. Have you seen that? Have you seen that clip yet? No, I haven't. I get bitched. <laughs> I'm like I'm like, oh dude, new boss. I wanted to fight this guy. <laughs> Immediate, bro. I love that fight. Uh, you know what I'm thinking? Because I'm about to say it again. I just think the melee for the drill is not good to use. Because when you use the melee, it locks you into a certain trajectory. You can't change it. Uh, it locks you in um, as you're like flying at them. And then you like, you hit the boss and like fucking, it, it gives you a little bit. It, it's it's uh, bullshit. What I found a lot of people do with the pile driver, it seems, is they either use it on like very slow targets or yeah. they wait till the target's staggered and then they charge it for max damage. Oh my God, does so much damage when you do that. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, what but, they usually do. But for like in my head, for my RP, I'm calm enough from going logging. So I'm just kind of using it on everything. Okay. It's probably my fault. It's, it's a build issue, but uh, I don't know. I like bitching. I love bitching. I fucking love bitching. I mean that genuinely. Yeah. I love bitching about shit. <laughs> Even if even if there's no reason to it, right. it's completely fine. Just something about it. I don't know. I feel like I would make like a really good like uh, 1990s wine mom. Uh, but I want to talk to you guys about something very important, uh, which is I believe 2024 is going to be the best year of all time for Gacha Games. Why? Okay. Uh, be many reasons. Uh, one, because Honkai Star Rail is still the greatest gacha game ever made. Okay. Uh, two, because, well, Fa Fontaine's gone. So Fontaine for Genshin, it's done already. Uh, people have already completed everything there is to do in about a week. So the game's dead, nobody likes it? 
No, people are still sit there and they're just like, oh, I'm going to watch my favorite streamer collect mint and berries. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's about right. Wait, so they wait another like year for content? Yep. Okay. Pretty much. Exciting. Be, be, I mean, generally in the past, the, the 4.1 and the 3.1 and the 2.1 updates are the real main updates, but we'll see. I have a feeling it probably won't do too much because Fontaine was a lot, but people just, I mean, good Lord. You think these people will learn by now, but they, they, they beat the game in about a week. Uh, but for 2024, I shit you not, Tower of Fantasy was never going to be the Genshin killer. Uh, the company themselves called them that. Horribly stupid idea. Got them so much negative PR, <laughs> and they failed miserably because that game is not good. Uh, and they keep sponsoring me, and I love that. Very cool. Uh, there's a game called Project Mugen. I know you've seen it. And Emmy, have you seen Project Mugen? No, I haven't. Um, this game looks so good, I don't believe that it's real. Like, that's how insane Can it I looks. I see a trailer of it. Yeah. Yo, know, Jake, we pull up Project Mugen. I'm going to take my shoes off. Hope nobody minds. Uh, but then put your feet on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got socks on now. I got socks on now. <laughs> okay, and they're clean. They're on not. the ground! Okay. <laughs> God, I feel so uncomfortable now. Shit. Uh, yeah, the game looks so good, I don't believe that it's real. Uh, so it pretty much took every good aspect of another successful game and just stole it and put it in their game, which I love now. I don't need innovation anymore. I just want all of the best features in one. Uh, so you can do Spider-Man web slinging. It's completely open world, from what I've been told. Uh, open world web swinging, you can drive cars, same combat system as Genshin Impact, characters look incredible, graphics look incredible, soundtrack sounds incredible, uh, but it should just be, unless they really shit the bed, it should just be Genshin, but better. I could be wrong. Once again, I think Genshin is great right now. But Project Mugen looks, n yeah, look at this shit. Uh, it doesn't look that choppy in, in game. Uh, it looks really good. But as you can see, you know, it has dynamic like Splatoon shooting, which looks really fun. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Combat, look at the web slinging, bro. Like that is nuts. You can run across buildings and shit. I didn't even know, I didn't even know mobile games could run that well. Uh, it's being developed by a company called um, Netties, which people say is like a red flag. Yeah. I looked into it. I don't see any problems with Netties. What, what's the red flag? Like, they have a this history. This is a pay-to-win developer, and uh, the games that they make aren't that good, basically. They made Naraka Blade Point, I believe, uh, which I know a lot of well, people Well, people like. are happy about that game more now, but for yeah. a long time, people were not happy about it. Okay. Like, I, I would say it's this... It's a really pretty game. And yeah, it characters. looks incredible. And, like, I, I always think that it's funny whenever the only... The only fat people in the game are the bad guys. <laughs> I, I, I think it's so fucking good. And like, yeah. yeah, you've got stuff like this. That's so cool. I feel like if you look at the different colors, it's kind of indicative of there's some sort of elemental system. For sure. With like fire and there's electricity and there's probably kinetic energy or gravity energy or something like that. Yeah, characters look super hot. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I think that some of the characters, like, this is the most important thing. Evil fat uh, guy. I'm not sure if we can, yeah, that's <laughs> obviously a bad guy. I'm not sure if we can find it on this trailer. But there's a they take the scene from Chainsaw Man, which is also taken the intro, which is also taken from another show. Uh, but like, there's a scene that shows a lot of different characters sitting next to each other. I'm not sure if it's in this video or not. The movie and theater. You can, the what? The movie theater scene. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I think it gives you a pretty good idea of like what the characters look like because to me, I was talking to people about this and I said, "What is the thing that you see all over Honkai Star Rail subreddit?" The characters. Pictures of Kafka. Pictures yep. of their favorite character. Actually, I think, you know, this character is so there cute. Is. Yeah, there That's you go. Pause real quick at the, so, at, the, at the theater scene. Like, what I did is I looked at each of these different characters and I were like... There's too many guys. Yeah. Uh, and I, I also think that, like, they're not... So, like, one thing that, like, the MiHoYo games do really well is they have like such incredible visual diversity with the different characters. Yeah. Right? And the only one that stands out to me is the the pink one the with the cat one, right? hat. Yeah. yeah, she's really cute. Yeah, and so like having the, the characters that are actually like really exciting to just look at and like people can identify with, I think that's so important. Right? I agree. Because like there's no, like people know who Kafka is who don't even play uh, Honkai Star Rail. Yeah, they know who Hu Tao is. They don't even play Genshin Impact. Yeah, Hu Tao, Ganyu, Eula, Venti. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, so it's like, and I think that's one of the problems that like, you know, Tower of Fantasy had is that they don't really have a lot of, like, except for that nemesis girl, the girl with like the, the red and black bodysuit. I thought she was pretty cool. But besides all the other ones, uh, they, they just didn't look that appealing, right? I, I get that. I think the other problem with uh, Tower of Fantasy was is that... Uh, 
you you could kind of play as the characters by unlocking their weapons to get their skins, but you couldn't really be them. So I don't think people had that also that immersion for when they uh, wanted to play as those characters or have multiple characters in the party, I believe, either. Yeah, it's cool that you could uh, customize your character, but I feel like having like a set character, like what Honkai and Genshin has in some ways is better. Yeah, I, I like having my own character personally. I'm an MMO Andy. Yeah, of Well, I, I think for like, uh, what is it called? Like the branding of the game, I think it's better to have like a mm. set main character. Oh, you're definitely right about that. Now, I also saw that you did a gotcha game, <laughs> gotcha game waifu tier list. Well, it wasn't a waifu tier list. It was a tier list of the quality of the character design. And that's what I was saying is that like, so if you look at the best character design, you've got, you know, the MiHoYo games. And I think Fate Grand Order has like incredible Fate character Grand design. Fate Grand Order has some really fucking good so, characters. So good. So who has better waifus, Honkai Star Wars or Genshin Impact? I don't know yet. I think Genshin has way better I also characters. agree. I, I, I think agree. so too, because Genshin has hotter girls I, just I, in general. Now, I think that the only... Like Kafka and Himiko are definitely super hot, but they're like the only ones and they're basically the yeah, same. Yeah, I also think it's like the, what is it called? Like the design decision of the game. Like Honkai Star Rail is a lot more like darker and like mature feeling and Genshin's very bright. Yeah. Like mm. I, th I think like the color palettes for the Genshin characters are better than the Honkai Star Rail palettes. I, I, I could see that. Mm. I think Genshin has a very unfair advantage, which is it's been out for three years. Uh, some of the characters that are coming in Honkai Star Wars are going to obliterate Genshin when they come out, but we just got to have time. Which one? I'll just, okay, I'll just say Which when, one? when when uh, when Raiden May comes out, when Yai Sakura comes out for Honkai Star Rail, when Black Swan comes out. Oh my, like, fuck shit. Even Topaz, Jing Liu, uh, they look incredible. Like, they look good, good. They look okay. I mean, I, I don't know if they look amazing, but... You've seen, you've seen Yai Sakura? I've seen the uh, Black Star. Well, well Black Yai's Swan. been around, like, even before Genshin. Yeah. But the, the remade version of Honkai Star Rail looks nuts. I'm gonna I'm looking it up. Yeah, you have to find it in some like Honkai yeah, Star Rail leagues. Honkai. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think Yelon is probably the best female character in Genshin Impact. I think Kafka is probably the best in Honkai Star Rail. I think Riku is the best for Fate Grand Order. Uh, Nicole is currently the best out of all non. Wait, who'd you say for Fate Grand Order? Riku. Riku. Mama Riku. The one with the big fucking boobs. <laughs> I, I, I disagree. No, I have to look it up. Wait, look up, look up, look up. Uh, bikini skin. Oh, well, yeah, Sakura looks just like how she does in uh, Honkai Impact. Yeah, which is absolutely perfect. Yeah. She is so hot. Um, really? Mama Riku beach skin is incredible. I bet it is. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it is good. Uh, well, like those games, like what I'm saying is like those games, they thrive on character design and they thrive on like the character interactions. You know, like another good example of this is Overwatch. Overwatch is yep. successful. Well, Overwatch was successful because <laughs> um, uh, of, of how good the characters were. Like Mercy is just so... Uh, iconic, right? Reinhardt, Diva, so iconic. Diva May, Tracer, Genji, Diva, Soldier Hanzo, 76. Ryan, absolutely. Yeah, Ryan. Uh, what's his name? Hog. Fat Boy. Roadhog? Yeah, Roadhog. Roadhog yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Why can't I remember that? This is my main Junk character. Rat. Junk Junk Rat, yeah. What the hell? <clears throat> and so, yeah, I mean, that's why the, the game is so good, right? It's because people are attached to the characters. That's why they can sell skins for $40. Oh, I agree. Uh, yeah, exactly. And so, like, the gacha games are, like, the same, but, like, probably even more because there's just, like, a higher ratio of mental illness with them. Yep. So, like, you have people that, like, you know, they just like the Overwatch characters. Well, the people are in a relationship with the gacha characters, yep. right? And so, this is a totally different thing. So, if you have a game, like, for example, Blue Protocol. Blue Protocol waifu, waifu meta, not very good. It doesn't exist. It, it's weak. Yeah. Weak waifu meta. And so, if you want to have a successful game like that, it has to have really, really good character design. Oh, yeah. Well, it's necessary. No, yeah, I mean, a good character will just get me to play a game, to meet them. Well, what was the last time you played a, a game just because you were interested in knowing more about a character? Mm. A character? Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? I think for me, it was probably Final Fantasy I've done Fantasy that with Seven. shows, but I don't know if I've done that with games at okay, all. I, I wanted to know more about Tifa. Oh, maybe Amori. Neither of you played that, though, I think. Amori, the creepy one? Yeah. Fuck that game. Amori, which one? Oh, yeah. Did you okay. finish that. that game? Fuck. No, fuck. No, absolutely not. Absolutely. How far did you get in that Amori? Wait, oh, it's, that's the name of the game? Yeah. Oh, I've never heard of that. Uh, don't play that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It's a, a, it's a 
cute looking psychological horror game. No, oh, game so it's it. like Little Nightmares? No, no. Little Nightmares Ooh. is fun. Ooh. Yeah, I li- thought Amori was fun. Okay. No, no, Little Nightmares didn't. Oh my God. That game, that I had to take like a week off streaming because I played Amori. That game was too fucked up. Wait, how far did you get? I, I got to the part. Oh my god! With the, the plot twist part? I don't know. I got to a part where I was walking downstairs, and there was eyeballs, and there was a man following me that I couldn't see, and he grabbed me. Oh, that's like the beginning of the game. You yep. haven't seen shit. Yep. Fuck that. Absolutely not. You haven't Absolute, seen. No, you haven't seen that. shit. No, Little Nightmares is one of my favorite games. Little Nightmares one and two, amazing. Oh god! Yeah. Oh god! You would hate the ending of that game. Oh yeah, no. Dude. Well, there's multiple endings. Dude, like but... the eyeball shit, the eyeball, and like someone being behind you, and like it's a, well, okay. So that part's supposed to like emulate having a phobia. So that's probably why you felt that yeah, way. Yeah, that's the phobia that I have. Whenever oh, I go, that, that makes sense. Yeah, like whenever like everywhere I go when I'm alone, I feel like someone's watching me. Yeah. It's fucking awful. So like I'll be in the bath and I'll be like pissing, and I'll think that there's someone sitting behind me on my toilet. You know what was really oh, that fucked game up? Would be hor- Cuz uh, one of the themes in that game is having something following you. Dude, dude. So I was streaming this bone show I had to end stream because of this. I was streaming and this one guy was just like, "What the fuck was that? Like what was that behind you?" And I'm like, "Nothing." And then no, it got worse. Because the chat joined in and they were like, "Yeah, there was something behind you." And I'm like, oh, "What are you talking about?" Oh and my god. They sent god. me an image. Are you fucking kidding me? No, they sent me an image. And there was a person behind me. Like uh-huh. they sent me an image of a person behind me, like 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 a like a like a woman and her daughter, like standing behind me, crouched was, behind my couch. Was she I need hot? to see this picture. No, and it was the, apparently <laughs> no. <laughs> apparently they like they AI'd they AI'd a image of a oh, creepy it's woman behind edited? me. Edited. Yes. Yeah, of course. Oh. But they did it within like eight seconds. Yeah. And I didn't know that was even possible. So I was just like, "What is happening?" Mm-hmm. Because that was, dude, it was creepy. Like, it, like because ima- imagine that. If you didn't know, because now I can warn you, that way that happens to you guys, it's not real. <laughs> like, imagine somebody sends you a screenshot of a person being in your room. I wouldn't be scared, but I would I would just immediately assume it's fake. And I'd be um, like, yeah. no, no, if they were going to kill me in my sleep, it would have happened already. And now, a word from our sponsors. See me? Have a seat. Well, well, okay, Miss Emily. Whatever you say. So, Tectone, I noticed that you haven't submitted your 100 creative IRL ideas to me this quarter. Your performance is lacking. M- Miss Emily, I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I've been getting a little bit of writer's block and it just things, things have Tell been Tell me, Tectone, how will the Extra Emily Content Factory continue to churn if its happy, happy workers are unproductive. I, I am so sorry, Mr. Chairman. I, 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 can, I can fix this. I can do better. I'm- Don't lie to me! Don't lies of P. <laughs> lies of P. Lies of P. Lies of P! Experience Pinocchio reimagined in a Souls-like action RPG coming out September 19th. Pre-order Liza P and play the demo today. Your destiny. That's like time traveling. If time traveling existed, we would know. Because would just a guy would come back. No, they wouldn't. Why? Because like the butterfly effect. Oh, I don't know what that means, Asma. That's like if you do one little thing in the past, it completely changes the future. So you think if someone were to teleport right there and say, time travel's real, steak and eggs. What if somebody went back in time and told Hitler that his art was good? That's a good one, right? That is a very yeah, good one. That's the butterfly effect. That's a very good one. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of these. Oh my God. Yeah. But you don't think there could have just been a safe way to do it? I think that there would be but the theoretical negative outcomes outweigh the possible positive one. Yeah, that's true. And also if somebody was a time traveler, and it's also like, yeah, no, that's actually true because if there was a time traveler, it would be really easy. Like, oh, you're a time traveler? Okay, well, what's the winning lottery numbers? Oh, you don't know them? Yeah, I didn't fucking think you were a time traveler. Shut up. 
But what if they did know? What if they did know? Yeah. Well, then they'd probably be a time traveler. That's a good point. Yeah. Or super lucky. Yeah. Or really, 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 really lucky. I was thinking about that because like, can the world really ever, let's look at the global warming, which is now being called global boiling. It's Wait, hot. Huh? Global boiling? You heard about global boiling? No. Is that real? It's, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, none of us will be honest. No, uh, it's all fucking fake. <laughs> okay, like I, 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 I don't really like. I mean, I'm not like I'm not like an expert in this or anything. Like I don't really understand it. But like my understanding is, it's not really global like heating. It's like just uh, climate destabilization. How do we restabilize it? Well, um, put some fridges in the ocean. I don't fucking know. I mean, that's that's the part that I don't understand. Okay. This that dude global warming talk freaks me the fuck out because it's just hot all the time. It would not freak me out like well, we if live they in said. Texas. Well, if, no, here's the, here's the thing. You lived in Texas your whole life. Well, no, no. Uh, let, let let me just stop you right okay. there. Uh, yes, but I fucking hate the heat. So like do I. I get up, I wake up as late as I possibly can. Like if they told me like, yeah, we're gonna go into another ice age, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is what it is. Yep. Yeah, it's fine. But like, if they said it's going to be five degrees hotter, I'm like, oh God, guys, I just, just kill me. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, just I mean, Dennis, me. I, mean, I left for 10 years. Yeah. Is every summer like this? Uh, the last summer, actually, this summer has been the hottest summer in Texas of all time. So, so, so you get how fucked up it is. It is fucked up. It's it is not just me. absolutely fucked up. The last time it was half this bad was 2011. Okay. Yeah, this is awful. My AC breaks every three days. Ooh. Yep. So that for, means you're putting it too low. I know. So I raise it. Okay. But then sometimes I get desperate and I think, well, maybe I can just lower it a little bit. Yeah. And then I never can. Just add some fans to your room or something. Yeah. But it makes me really sad because my AC downstairs works, but my AC upstairs where my workroom is doesn't work. Too well, close that to the sun. sounds like a ventilation issue. It really does. Uh, and my landlord just spent twelve thousand dollars because apparently I broke broke it to fix it, and I don't want to charge him any more money because he's a sad old man and I don't want to ruin his life. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna just deal with it until I, and I'm gonna move out. Twelve thousand dollars. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, that's I, not I, right. Oh my god. I yeah, am moving I, out at the end of the year, one million percent. I had my AC replaced and like fixed and everything. And like now in my house, it is 68 degrees and I can be 108 outside. It's totally fine. That's lovely. Yep, that's, that's right. That's and my I, downstairs. I sit there in a blanket all the time and I am cozy and it is great. <laughs> well, I, am, I am pits out upstairs because it's generally at the coldest 75. Which I, I used to hot. have that in my upstairs room. Yeah. I would sit up there and I would be cooking. I would be cooking <laughs> on my stream, like yeah. fucking peeling the hair off of my fucking head because it's I'm sweating. I'm like fucking pissed off. I'm like, what the fuck did you just say to me, little bitch? You think that I don't know what I'm talking about with this? Well, guess what? I'm going to pull up your phone. I, I would actually get heated. Unironically, all I would do is get mad. Like my mood would literally go down at the same rate that the temperature went up. Yep. That's, that's awful. Yep. That's happening to me a lot as well. It's very frustrating because I, you know, I've, I was very happy for a very long time in my stream and now I'm getting angry because my AC keeps on breaking and fixing and breaking and fixing and uh, uh, I'm just going to start fucking losing it. I'm, I'm really going to start. Some guy called me Fex for Life today and I wanted to break. Ooh. Yeah, Why did they call you Fex for Life? Because I was so angry. I was just sitting there saying nothing on stream while I was grinding a boss fight for 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's and, they, right. and they called Wait, me Fex for Life. I thought that Fex for Life stream, they like rotated a bunch of random people. They did. They have a bunch of skinwalkers. One guy, I... I uh... Wait, so who's doing it? Those like the guide authors? Or is it just random people? I have no idea. Did you see this? You didn't see that? Oh, God. Huh? You didn't confused. see the guy who said, fuck you, Asma? Go ahead. And did this, this finger? Wait, huh? No, I didn't see this. What, what's going on? Oh, so Asman was reacting to uh, Factor Life, just minding his own business, you know, just sitting there, seeing too close, calling out the bullshit of Factor Life. And then uh, one of the skinwalkers who runs Factor Life uh, <laughs> uh, said, fuck you, Asman. What is he called? Asman Bald or something? Asman Bald? Shut up, Asman Bald. Get out of here. Oh, and oh, yeah. this is to you. I got to go. Ooh. Yeah. And he, I'm like, okay. And uh, then he just turned off his stream. He got fired, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I, I don't care if he gets fired. I, I, I'm not, like, bro, like I'm sitting here calling him out. If he's going to get upset at me, who cares? Yeah, that's I'm not fair. offended by this. It's just, it's weird, you know? That's it's Because like the people who work at Factual Life, they're like, uh, they're like soulless zombies. I wouldn't really use the word work. Okay. The people who sit there. The people that collect, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this guy. 
<laughs> Jesus, bro. <laughs> so fucking good yeah it was so many people watch that too it was so funny it's like you know it's like it's like when you have a customer service employee because mm -hmm. factual life and then the reason why i'm so comfortable with shit talking factual life is uh because only a positive thing can come from them reacting to me uh calling them soulless zombies uh, I guess they they need to their their bullshit needs to be fucking brought out it needs to be stopped. I'm so fucking tired of seeing this shit. Oh, I I don't think anybody likes them. Like I remember yep. I got a I, I looked up something in Dark Souls two, like how to find something in Dark Souls two, and so I look it up and I go to the place that it tells me to go. Big surprise, it's not there. Yep. And you know what? I know the worst thing is that I was so mad about playing Dark Souls two, I actually didn't blame FX for life. I blamed the game. I said, this game is such dog shit, the guides yeah. don't even make sense. Yep. Yeah. No, I had I had another experience, but I thought I thought I was the problem. Yeah. And so, so I was like, maybe the I'm guides just an idiot. aren't even good. No, they're no. awful. They're they're they, they borderline feel AI generated. They there guess. are a lot of other websites that are better resources. Yeah. That's just um, how it is. So it's like when like like interacting with a factual life streamer is like uh, and when they when they flicked off asthma like like culture shocked me so much. It, it's I like, thought it was funny. It was probably the funniest thing they've ever done. No, it's funny, but it's like when you talk to a customer service employee and like, oh hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Paper or plastic? Plastic. And then if, if they were to just be like, hey man, kill yourself. You know, it's like one of yeah. those things where you don't expect them to like have. The, 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 you don't think their AI can say that. Yeah, you know, because like when you when you go into work as a customer service, well, you have to you have to kind of you have to put up a face. You really do, because otherwise you're going to lose your fucking mind. So so when they drop the face and they become who they actually are, it was just it was just freaking me, man. Because I always forget they have feelings sometimes. That's my that's my horrible trait. Is that sometimes assuming that uh, the real world has uh, real life NPCs. It's a very bad habit of mine. I do that with everybody. That's that's sick. <laughs> yeah, like except for people that I know well. Like yeah. I'm like okay, like. Because this is why I never get mad at customer service employees or anything like that. I never have this problem because I just go and, oh, you got my order wrong? Okay, what can I tell you to make my order right? <laughs> like, I don't care. I'm not upset at you. Like, my my goal here is to get my taco. And it, uh, if I can get you to just... I what. What input cheat code can I tell you to give me my taco? Dialogue option B. Yes, dialogue option B. All right, got it. <laughs> yep, it's like, oh yeah, you totally, oh my yeah. God. Like, yeah, I don't get people like that at all, dude. I went to an ice cream shop when I went to the beach like two weeks ago. And, which beach? Uh, down in like the Jersey area. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, I don't remember what it was called, but I was at this ice cream shop and this old man goes up to the counter of the ice cream shop and it's like a teenager working like scooping things and he's like it costs five dollars to park on the street down the road and the guy's like yep he's like what is wrong with you and the kid's like i'm sorry <laughs> like, what the hell <laughs> jesus it was just crazy to witness yeah, I just like in any sort of public interaction, my goal with every public interaction is for it to be over. Yeah. And so like I just tell the person if they're rude to me or something like that, I'm like, yep, that's totally true. You're right. I'm an idiot. All right. Are you done now? Great. I've got to go. I feel like uh, I, I have a very bad habit of just getting myself into a lot of danger that I don't need to put myself into. What? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was at a 7-Eleven. This was like 10 years ago. I remember this so clearly because it, to me, I was just being honest. But I realized that you, you shouldn't be honest in the world. You should just lie constantly. I feel like lying is one of the best skills a human being can pick up. Uh, that's why I lie all the fucking time now. Uh, I went to the 7-Eleven and there's this homeless guy and he comes up to me and he's like, hey man, can you spare any change? Can you spare any change? Uh, and I'm with my buddy and <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry, man. I can't spare any change. I'm only carrying $100 bills on me. So he got really close to me really quickly. And that's when I realized, oh God, I'm about to get mugged. <laughs> I'm about to get mugged. And my buddy just starts screaming at this guy, goes for his trunk, grabs his baseball bat, and gets this guy to back the fuck up off me. But it didn't even cross my mind how awful of a dialogue option that was to say, no, I'm sorry, man, I only carry gold and jewels yeah. on me. My bad. So you're a treasure goblin. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to whoop my ass and find out too. Uh, I got super sidetracked. Okay. 
Project Mugen. Yeah. Looks incredible. Emmy, you're going to love it if it's real. Netties, I it see no sick. red flags yet. If it's pay to win, I don't care. It's a gotcha game. I don't care. They're all pay to win. Exactly. Zenless Zone Zero. Yes. That is also coming out in 2024. You have seen like 40% of all the characters in that game. Okay. The leaks for those, for the leaks of the characters of that game are absurd. Like some of the most, I don't, maybe, maybe gratuitous is the word. All of the, all of the women have very big boobies. I know. It's okay. It's yeah. super cool. And the cutscenes are nuts for Nicole. Holy shit. They sure are. I cannot I've wait. Have you, have you seen the Nicole cutscene yet? I mean, Nicole. Yeah, Nicole from Zenless on Zero. Mm -mm. The pink hair one. Oh, uh, we well, got you. Yo, uh, Jay, can you pull up Nicole's Zenless Zone Zero menu animation? Uh, well, that's cooking. Um, there's also <laughs> Seven Deadly Sins, uh, the open world Genshin clone as well. There's that one, which looks very good. What is this? Uh, Seven Deadly Sins. And so there's like, like off the anime or what? Yes. And there's two words that go after it. I don't think it's great. I want to see that. I want to see that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we oh, go. Yeah, look, this look at is this. her. Look at this. Can you full screen that? Oh, she's cute. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait. It gets better. It gets it better. Does. Hold up. Oh, we don't care about the skills, bro. We don't care about the skills. Nobody cares about the skills. Do the thing. Do the thing. It's about to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. I'm telling you it's going to happen. Wait, skip forward five seconds. Do the thing. Do the thing. Oh, my God. This is killing me, bro. I need you to see it. Okay, she does the thing. And then you, she, you, she gets zoomed in on Shirley. She gets zoomed. I'm going to break. I'm going to... Oh, my God. She flips back and forth. And one, she like throws her ass to the screen. And the uh, the other one, she flips her boobs to the screen. It is insane. Because the game's 16 and up now. And, and Genshin was 12 and up. Honkai Star Wars 12 and up. Wait, is this a Hoyoverse game? Yeah, it is. This is, oh, been, this is their new... Well, yep. This is the new game. This is the new, this is the new game. You haven't seen this at all? Yeah, wait, no, I, short, I saw short. like some. Short. I saw some like combat of it. Okay, wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second. Here we go. Here we go. This is my queen, bro. She looks beautiful. Okay, there's one that's already absurd. No, do the flip. Is that not crazy? Does that not look so <laughs> yep, good? There you go. <laughs> okay, sorry. I love this character so much. Cool. She looks so good, but uh, yeah, it is going absurd. There has never been a, as as lewd of a uh, a game as Zenless Zone Zero for Hoyoverse, at least. Uh, and I think it's going to do really well because the the fan base is growing up. And I think Hoyo is being very smart. Probably in two years, they'll release an 18 and up game. Uh, but yeah, Project Mugen, Zenless Zone Zero, uh, Blue Protocol, which I think is going to be fucking terrible. The new Seven Deadly Sins you game. think Blue Protocol is going to be terrible? Yeah. Uh, Girls Frontline 2. Oh, shit. What the also, fuck is that? You ever heard of Girls Frontline 2? No, I haven't. It's the gun girl game. Yeah, um, you ever play XCOM? No. Uh, I know what it is. Yeah, so it's, it's XCOM Gotcha. Okay. Has some of the most ridiculous models. Okay. Uh, for because you talk about characters you want like instantly recognizable. Yeah. Has like five of them already. Okay. And there's this cat girl. Ooh. So hot. Uh, yeah. Girls Frontline Two is going to farm. I cannot wait to play that shit. Uh, now it is doing the thing that I think kills every game in existence, which is it's releasing in China first, uh -huh. and then three months later, Global's coming out. I don't mind that because that way they iron out all the problems. Yeah, I also I think, think that they, they don't care about us as much as uh, Asia. Okay, do so, they make way more money in Asia? I yeah. Don't know. Oh yeah, they yeah. make way more. Um, at least for the games that I play. Uh, has there actually been like a good example of they released this in China first and it was broken and then they fixed it and they released it? Like, has that happened? Would you say Lost Ark? Uh, Lost Ark was kind of like that. Is there anything else? Um, I don't know. I have to think okay. about it. Because I don't like that. I just feel like it kills all hype for the game. Yeah. Because everything gets optimized. The meta gets found out. All discoverability. Everybody plays through and like they're all, yeah, everybody knows everything. But I feel like that's the same anyway, right? Because you have like betas and like, you know, closed testing and stuff like that. And people just kind of follow the same meta, you know, anyway. I, I think from the beginning, sure. But betas yeah. are sometimes wrong because it's not the whole product. But when they release the whole product and it's just out there. I don't know. It makes right. me very sad. I love going in blind with the rest of the world and like getting connected. Like, I don't I, know. I would prefer that. Yeah. Yeah, I would prefer that. I, I actually get really excited how different CN's opinions are than uh, US opinions are. Uh, like, that happens like a lot uh, for like video games and meta and understanding what the Chinese meta is versus the United States meta is, as nuts or global meta mm -hmm. is. Uh, I also love how for the games that I play, <laughs> if you're a global player, you're a fucking moron. But if you're a CN player, you're the smartest. Uh, I, I love that shit. Pridwin, the website. I'm not sure. Have you heard of Pridwin? 
I probably, yeah. Yeah, it's like the big like uh, DPS ranking website. Um, pretty much uh, a bunch of CN players came after them and said that their DPS rankings were wrong. They didn't provide any evidence and they just said, well, we're the CN player, so you should listen to us and shut your mouth. Uh, now they're changing a whole bunch of, uh, they're changing a whole bunch of things on their website, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, thank you for listening to my gotcha talk. Really? It's Thank coming you. to your, your lot, TED Talk? A lot of, a lot of games. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen with some of these games, right? I do think that like there are a lot of really, really crazy games. Like, I mean, this year has been probably the biggest year for gaming and so on. Yep. Yep. Right? It's been absolutely fucking ridiculous. It's like, so good. Starfield is coming out in three days. Which is going to be awful. Look at that. You think so? You think it's going to be bad? Yeah, it's a Bethesda game. So the first probably like year of the game will be like not good. Really? Uh, and then they'll fix it and it'll be great. But then oh, people wow. will quit. Well, the thing is, I mean, it will be single player. Yeah. So maybe it's fine because Skyrim and Oblivion and Mar were very janky when they were first released, but they were still fun. But 76 and uh, Elder Scrolls Online, I don't know, man. Those games are unplayable for me. I feel like they're so bad. I never even played them because you I heard... Even, you know, even as the MMO, you ever played Elder Scrolls Online? No, I, I played it. Uh, just okay. a little bit though. Not yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I have high hopes. I know Sears really excited. I'm going to play it on launch as well. I got to beat Armored Core real quick. I'll probably beat it tonight or tomorrow. Uh, unless... Is there like something that's going to fuck me? Yeah. For, for Armored Core? Uh, probably, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's... Is there like any hard endgame boss? Yeah. Harder than Gwynethan? Balatar, Baltus. Yeah. Bal okay, harder oh, than that yeah. guy? Oh, yeah. Okay. Way harder. Okay, well, I'm going to attempt to crush that shit and then uh, do that. Also, can I read a five-star review real quick? Let's do it. Cool. We need to get this slinky away from me, man. I can't stop fucking with it. <laughs> I got a problem. Uh, here we go. This is from Trav H 91 which is favorite podcast. Steak and Eggs is hands down my favorite podcast. When I work, I always have an episode playing that makes my workday bearable. Keep them coming, guys. Highly entertaining, smiley face. That's nice. What a nice that, comment. That was wow. actually very nice. And we have a message from Sage of Six Tacos. I'm locked in for every oh, minute God. of this podcast. <laughs> Not using it for background noise or anything at all. I'm just staring at Asman's forehead. Uh, there's a lot to look at. We have Sether who says, great podcast, great energy from everyone. Thank you, Seer, for coming on. And the final one, which is, I just want to say... I'm part of the small percentage that listens to the entire episode thoroughly. Not sure if y'all check the wow, comments. What a nice guy. I, I, I made a comment last week uh, where I said, there's no fucking way anybody listens to this podcast this long. Yeah. And then there was so many comments being like, bitch, I was there. Wow. <laughs> I heard you. That's impressive. Holy shit. So if you're still here, comment cool. peanut butter and don't explain why. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, shit, I mean, there we go. We're going to do the Patreon episode, yep. get into all of that. And uh, really appreciate you guys watching, hanging out. And uh, I Ooh, suppose... Gotcha Pod Clips. Our oh, new Clips channel. Yeah. Check <laughs> out Pod Clips. Steak and Egg gotcha Pod, Pod Clips <laughs> channel, which should be live now. Yep. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Peace. I think I discovered a new sandwich option out this morning. I spilled barbecue sauce on my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That shit was crazy. How do you spill barbecue? How, how do you just have barbecue sauce laying around? Right. So what happened was, is I had a hot dog and yeah. I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich uh -huh. and I put barbecue sauce on my hot dog because I make, I take my buns and then I air fry them with my hot dog and then I put two cheese strings on the side of it and I heat those up so then I have a cheese dog and then I use the Whataburger spicy ketchup. Oh my God, that sounds so good. And then I use a Bubba's barbecue sauce. I don't use Sweet Baby Ray's anymore because I found Bubba's. Bubba's is good as shit. And then it, and a little bit dribbled over it. Yeah. And it was fucking good because then it was sweet and it was creamy and it was salty. I am like, I'm fucking Dude, hungry I'm as so fuck. hungry. I'm, I'm so on, excited to eat in the meeting. Yeah, I, I'm on the one meal a day meta right now. What, what's your one meal? Uh, usually I'll have like Chipotle or pizza or something like that. And then I'll have like maybe a snack or something else a little bit later on. That's it. Has your Chipotle order changed? Or no, no? Cause, why cause, would I change it? 
Okay, yeah, because you, you changed my life with that. You got me going from black beans to pinto beans, and that was the greatest. Is better? Yep, they yeah. are. They are better. It's that simple. 